Ok, Tadi, este, son las dos de la tarde. Eh, me avisas cuando quieres empezar. No sé dónde está Juan, yo voy a hacer la traducción. Así me okay. avisas. Eh, yo estoy vi viendo como que estás hablando. Vas a pausar y me vas a indicar también cuáles son este, las láminas cuando debo proceder. Uh -huh. ¿Está bien? Sí, está bien. Perfecto. So, si quieren comenzamos de una vez. Ok. Um, no. Voy a empezar con la introducción. Ok. Perfecto. Um, Good afternoon and thank you for all the participants who are here today uh, for this workshop of Dismantling Violence Against Women in Latin America. We are privileged to have with us um, Gloria Tari Angeles for the Reverdia Radio La Voz de Migrante. Uh, Tari Angeles has been an activist. Uh, she comes from the Oaxaca in Mexico and she's been an activist about indigenous rights. She became more active in New York City after the, the incidents of Ayotzinapa. We know the murder of the students uh, that occurred in Mexico, the 43 missing. Uh, that brought her to more activism and recently she has been activated uh, concerning the issues of the indigenous people here in New York City and advocating with the Mexican consulate to ensure that they have the rights that they should have here in New York City and also bringing consciousness to the issues that affect them, the indigenous communities here from, um, from Mexico the, and how they are affected and impacted by um, the lack of services here in, in New York. ¿Quieres añadir algo, Tadi, que quizá no, no mencioné? No, está completo. Muchas gracias. Uh, hi everyone, and thank you for uh, being here. I'm so um, I'm so happy to be a part of this uh, annual conference, national conference, um, Green Party USA. Y pues bueno, hoy vamos a tocar un tema muy delicado que es la violencia de género. Eh, me voy a enfocar en México. So she, Tadi is sharing that um, she's very honored to be here. Um, es un honor estar con el Partido Verde de los Estados Unidos aquí presentando. Y pues ella va a enfocar su presentación sobre la República de México. Uh, yo voy a enfocar sobre la presentación sobre Puerto Rico. I'm going to be focusing on Puerto Rico. We're going to start the presentation on Mexico. Uh, I will be translating on behalf of Tadi, so we'll be taking uh, short pauses so that people have the opportunity uh, to um, listen in the other language. Um, Michael, I'm going to need uh, to be able to translate for Tadi. What do I need to do? If you could clarify that for me, please. Sure, Lorraine. I think um, what we've discovered during the testing was that um, since we're taking uh, the translation in sections and pauses, okay. you can just go the way we're, we're currently set up now. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, voy a cambiar la lámina ahora, Tadi? Mm -hmm. Sí, está bien. Okay. Give me one second. I'm sorry. No quiere moverse la lámina. Sorry, ahora. ¿Vas a usar esto o, o procedo? No, procede, solo eso es como para la introducción. ¿Esto está bien? Uh, no, yo creo que nos regresamos a la primera porque voy a, voy a primero hacer un texto. Ok, muy bien. Ok. Um, el patriarcado es un término originalmente derivado de la palabra patriarca. Es utilizado en los años 70 por los estudios feministas. Okay, so patriarchy is a term that's used um, that comes from patriarchal and it's derived, it's a terminology that's arrived from the 1970s. Y de género para hacer referencia a una estructura de organización y dominación. 
And it's, it comes from the structuring and the organization. Uh, a structure, a societal and organizational structure that underlines the question of domination. Sexo género en la que prevalece la autoridad y el poder de los hombres. It is a sex and the gender that recognizes the authority of men in this organizational structure of control and domination. Mientras las mujeres son despojadas del ejercicio de libertades, derechos, poder económico, social y político. While women do not have social and political power within these structures, uh, they do not have fin financial uh, power and they also are subordinate to what is the structure of the patriarchy. Diversos estudios de las ciencias sociales confirman que en México aún prevalece una cultura patriarcal. Um, the studies of social sciences have shown that in Mexico, this patriarchal structure is the structure by which the society is organized. En las relaciones entre mujeres y hombres y en las familias. In the relationships between men and women and family structures. Y en los espacios de interacción social y política. And the interactions in society and in the political structures. Por ello, el uso de este término en ciertos contextos puede adquirir un carácter de denuncia. Uh, given this reality, the use of this terminology can be attributed as a form of protest or to denounce the structure of which women live in. Con, mira, con miras a trascender y hacia sistemas de organización social y política, It, it transcends um, political structures and uh, societal structures, and it permeates these structures. Inspiradas en la justicia, la igualdad, y libres de violencia. And of course, um, the movements that have gone against the structure are looking for justice, as looking for equity, and is looking for uh, changes in society. El patriarcado acompañado del Estado y la Iglesia recrudecen en México esta incesante violencia. Patriarchy is perpetuated by the state and by the structures of the church and have exacerbated the question of violence of women in México. La pareja es el, es el último eslabón en esta cadena de violencia The, the, the couple or the person's partner is the last stepping stone of the structure of violence. Gracias a que las primeras la han normalizado. Given the fact that the overarching organizational structures have sanctioned this type of behavior. En México se han implementado leyes que protegen a las mujeres. In Mexico, there are laws that protect women. Sin embargo, muchas de ellas solo se han quedado en un papel. However, many of these laws only exist by paper. Y se puede constatar cuando se hacen las denuncias. And you can see this when things are denounced. Las mismas autoridades revictimizan a las mujeres. And those very structures revictimize women. O se burlan de ellas solo por su condición de mujer, de ser mujeres. Or they make fun of them precisely because of their condition of being a woman. En los dos años, especialmente en la Ciudad de México, han surgido muchos grupos y colectivos de feministas. In the last two years, particularly in Mexico City, there have been formations of a lot of collectives of women. En respuesta al creciente número de feminicidios. 
in response to the growing number of femicides y desapariciones de jóvenes en todo el país and the disappearances of women throughout the Mexican uh, the Republic of Mexico ha habido marchas numerosas de las cuales las dos más grandes también han sido en México there have been very large protests two of them uh, focused in Mexico City en agosto del 2019 fue la primera y esta marcha fue duramente criticada por la sociedad. En August of, perdón, ¿cuál fue la fecha otra vez? 2019. En 2019 fue, um, it was a very large protest and this was uh, severely criticized by the government. Gracias a que los medios pusieron a las mujeres como Vándalas por haber grafiteado distintos monumentos históricos. Because the, uh, the press and the means of, of communication had highlighted the woman as being graffiti uh, and vandalizing instead of recognizing the crisis that women are facing in Mexico. Y entonces vino una contestataria muy fuerte por parte de las feministas que consiguieron la solidaridad de mujeres en todo el mundo, en muchas partes del mundo. And then there was a very strong um, response to this um, characterization of women in Mexico, and this response was strongly um, supported by women throughout the world. La respuesta fue, les duelen más unos monumentos grafiteados que los feminicidios de mujeres. It pains them more that some monuments have graffiti than the crisis of femicides in our country. El mismo presidente de México no ha reconocido abiertamente este problema. The president of Mexico has not openly recognized this problem. Es una herida abierta que a México y a sus mujeres les duele. This is an open wound that in Mexico and the women of Mexico still have not healed from. Uh, ¿Me puedes poner la lámina de la educación y la normalización de la violencia, por favor? Sí. Ok, aquí podemos ver los porcentajes y las edades de lo que los hombres piensan sobre las relaciones sexuales, eh, mientras que las mujeres... Eh, tenemos un porcentaje por un 2% más alto. Okay, so we, here we can see um, by the, the graphic, the infographic, the normalization of how women and when are perceived in both these graphics. Okay, en, en, la, segunda, en la segunda gráfica podemos ver que las mujeres se dice, dicen los hombres que se hacen las difíciles, dicen que no, pero en realidad quieren decir que sí. Es decir, eso piensan los, los hombres de las mujeres. In other words, when it comes to interaction between women and men, men perceive that when women say no, that it's actually yes, and that they're making themselves difficult when it comes to interaction uh, sexually. De acuerdo al informe Rompiendo Moldes de Oxfam, According to the study done um, breaking the molds by Oxfam, el cual analiza las creencias que tienen los jóvenes de 15 a 25 años, that analyzes the beliefs that um, young people have from 15 to 25 years, de ocho países de América Latina y el Caribe, of eight countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, en torno a la violencia y las relaciones de pareja in terms of violence and the relationship between couples. Bien, la educación y la normalización de la violencia. The normalization and the education of violence. Cuando era niña, mi padre decía, las mujeres no sirven para nada, solo para tener hijos. When I was a child, my father would say, women are not of any value. They only are worthy if they can have children. Quizás una de las formas más violentas del rechazo solo por ser mujer. 
This is one of the most violent um, expressions of just be, being born a woman to be, be told this. Sin embargo, este patrón se sigue repitiendo en muchos hogares mexicanos. However, this pattern of, of this type of verbiage is repeated in so many Mexican homes. Sin importar el estatus social. Without regard to the social status that people have. En el 2020, México registró 3,752 homicidios. In 2020, there was 3,700, I'm sorry, 3,700, otra vez, Daddy, la estadística. 3,752. Okay, 3,752 homicides. De los cuales solo 969 fueron tipificados como feminicidios. Only 967 were actually categorized as femicide. La violencia en México es uno de los fenómenos más complejos de entender y en consecuencia de contener. The violence against women in Mexico is one of the most complex situations that exist, but it's also a complex situation to stop this trend. Desde el 2007, los niveles, niveles de incidencia de delitos de alto impacto. From 2017, the incidents of large impact in Mexico. Y conflictos armados han, han alcanzado sus máximos históricos. And the issue of armed conflict has risen to its highest levels. Esta tendencia no cede especialmente en estados con mayor presencia del crimen organizado. And this you can witness in the highest uh, levels in the states where you have organized crime. Una de las principales de demandas en el marco del 8 de marzo del 2021 fue la erradicación de la violencia en todas sus expresiones. One of the largest is the incidents in, ¿me puedes repetir eso otra vez, Tadi? Demand, demand, demand. Demands, demands, right. One of the largest demands was most recently in, ¿me puedes decir otra vez la, la fecha? Uh, March 8, 2020. March 8, okay, 2020, gracias. Um, pero especialmente la violencia explícita contra las mujeres y niñas. But you can highlight that the violence was explicitly against women and girls. En México, en promedio cada día se reportan 611 incidentes de violencia familiar. In Mexico, there reported 611 incidents of violence in families a day. 160 víctimas de lesiones dolosas. 160 with um, basically with with violence, um, physical violence that has been experiences um, there. 46 presuntas víctimas de violación y 10 asesinatos. 46 that have been um, sexually um, ah, violación. Um, raped. Y la última, Tadi, perdón. Diez asesinatos, feminicidios. And, and ten femicides. Esto de acuerdo a la secretaría, al secretariado ejecutivo del Sistema Nacional de Seguridad Pública. And this is in accordance with the secretary that is in charge of the security of the national security. These are the stats that are provided by the Secretary of the National Security of Mexico. Los delitos relacionados con la violencia de género se mantuvieron constantes o incluso aumentaron de manera importante. The incidents of domestic violence have incremented substantially. Durante la pandemia, during the pandemic. 
ni los confinamientos implementados durante el 2020 lograron relajar esta situación. And the situations of confinement that existed in 2020 did not lower the rate of incidences with domestic violence. Uno de los indicadores de alerta fueron las llamadas de auxilio que las mujeres que realizaron las mujeres al 911. One of the indicators of this increment of domestic violence is indicated by the number of calls that women have made to 911 looking for help. Um, sorry. En el 2020, los reportes de emergencia también tocaron sus niveles más históricos. En 2020, you had um, the number of incidents that hit historic levels. En total, en dicho año se registraron 260 mil 67 llamadas y marzo del 2020 fue el pico más alto. Okay, so in um, March of 2020, you have two, uh, 267,000, right, calls and incidents that were marked. This is like a height, and particularly in the months of March, April, which was at that time the height of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, podemos pasar a la lámina. México es un país caracterizado por la violencia, por favor. Sí. Okay. La violencia física, sexual y feminicida conforman uno de los problemas más persistentes en todo el país. So you have the incidents in Mexico of physical violence, you have sexual violence and also um, feminicida, femicides. Gran parte del fracaso de las políticas para la contención de estas violencias es la falta de integración a la perspectiva de género. A great deal of the, the fact that these incidents occur and the level of violence is that there has not been an education with perspective to gender. Atención. En la, en la prevención, atención y seguimiento y aplicación de justicia. There has not been the attention to prevention and also to seek justice in these cases. Los feminicidios no ocurren como un fenómeno aislado. Están directamente ligados con una cultura de misoginia. Femina femicides do not exist separate from the structure of the society that is misogynistic. Que prevalece y se normaliza en todos los ámbitos de la vida cotidiana. That these norms um, are prevalent and they are made normal in all facets of life. Desde la casa y la, es y la escuela hasta los lugares de trabajo. From the home to the places of work to in school. Los medios de comunicación y las instituciones de gobierno. The means of, of communication and the institutions of government. La erradicación de los feminicidios solo puede suceder con políticas transversales. To eradicate feminist, uh, femicides, it could only be done when you eradicate what are the present structures that exist in society. En, e integrales dirigidas a eliminar la, la estructura que omite todas las expresiones de violencia. And eliminate those structures that promulgate these, the sense of violence and normalize what this is in the everyday life structures. En el país podrían haberse evitado si las autoridades correspondientes hubieran actuado oportunamente en algún indicio de que alguna mujer estuviera en peligro. And had these, um, had these structures been questioned and had things been placed in terms of prevention, it would have eliminated 
these high incidents of domestic violence and of femicide that is now existing in Mexico. Vamos a pasar a la lámina de las políticas sin presupuesto, no son políticas. Gracias. Aquí podemos observar eh, cómo siempre las mujeres están por debajo de estos, um, pues como de estos derechos. En el primero podemos ver cuál es el propósito de involucrar, de involucrar a las mujeres y a hombres por igual. Sin embargo, pues esto no sucede tampoco. We see here that even when we look at the funding or the budgets that are allocated, right, for the purpose, right, of women and men, you see that women are treated differently than men. They are subordinate to what is the system, right? And so it's very important to understand that institutions that are there treat women differently in terms of the allocation of funding, in terms of the resources that they need, they're treated on a different, on a different balance. El otro ejemplo muy claro que tenemos eh, es un ejemplo, dice las mujeres de 30 a 50 años usan toallas femeninas. 30 toallas femeninas cuestan 63 pesos. El precio sin IVA de este producto es de 54 pesos. Es decir, el 9.26% del sueldo va al impuesto de estos productos, eh, haciendo una, una comparación eh, brutal de, de, de los presupuestos. When you think about the fact that women need hygienic project, products like sanitary napkins and how these are uh, fixed with um, a cost, an additional cost of 54.31, You know, it costs 63 pesos, but there's also an imposition. And that's directly seen as, as being a difference, a made a difference or business or um, because women are who they are and they have this need. So it's a 9.26 um, increment of funds that women have to spend that's related and based on their gender. And this causes an inequity. For women. Thank you, Lorraine. La transversalización de la, de la perspectiva de género, como muestran estas cifras, no ha sido suficiente para erradicar ni siquiera para reducir la incidencia de violencia. Right. These, these discussions that have been put forth have not been effective in eradicating these distinctions and also the question of violence against women. Una de las principales acotaciones que se hace es la necesidad de hacer de los derechos de las mujeres una prioridad, no solo desde los discursos, sino desde los recursos. One of the things that has been highlighted is not only for the question of equity with women to just be something that's a proposal or a law, but rather that the resources that women need be allocated to them in equity. En los años recientes y especialmente con la demanda de recursos que ha implicado la pandemia del COVID-19, gran parte de las instituciones y programas destinados a la prevención y atención de la violencia de género se han visto afectadas en términos de presupuestos. Many of the programs that exist for the prevention of violence against women and for to help women that are in precarious violence situations have seen a reduction in budgetary, a significant reduction in budgetary um, allocations. Se han efectuado estos recortes de programas de atención a víctimas, a los refugios para mujeres, niñas y niños, a las guarderías, al sistema de cuidado de menores públicos. You see a substantial reduction in childcare. You see a substantial reduction in uh, shelters that are there to uh, help women escape the cycle of violence, domestic violence shelters. You see the, the lowering of budgets with prevention programs. And all of these have been impacted, particularly in the last two years and uh, looking at the the question of the pandemic and COVID-19. 
Es decir, estas políticas también uh, en los años recientes, desde que tenemos nuevo presidente, también quitaron un presupuesto muy importante a la, busca, a la búsqueda perdón, de desaparecidos, entre las que hay miles de jovencitas desaparecidas. And unfortunately, there has been a lowering of the, the cost and, and the allocation of budget, uh, particularly for young women who have been disappeared. And there is a very high number of women that have disappeared, young women who have disappeared in Mexico. Eh, vamos con la presentación del video de la violencia durante la pandemia, por favor. Desde que empezó el confinamiento hemos visto un cambio importante en las atenciones, tanto vía telefónica como a través de redes sociales. Llevamos más de tres meses y lanzamos precisamente el 17 de marzo la campaña Aislamiento sin Violencia No Está Sola. Y esta campaña nos permite identificar mensualmente justamente cómo están moviéndose las atenciones y los números. Y bueno, pese a que se ha dicho en reiteradas ocasiones que en México la familia es fraterna y que en México el confinamiento vino presente precisamente afianzar los lazos afectivos. La realidad es que no es así en el tema de la sobrecarga de cuidados, el tema de las labores domésticas y por supuesto las violencias que viven al estar conviviendo muchísimo más tiempo con el agresor. Eh, haciendo una comparación de cómo estábamos en 2019 a cómo estamos 2020, en tan solo los tres primeros meses de confinamiento, las estadísticas que hemos generado nos reflejan que se incrementó en un 80% el número de llamadas y mensajes de auxilio ante situaciones de violencia dentro de la casa. En México hemos tenido muy altos índices de violencia familiar. Uh, nos dice mucho el hecho de que la violencia familiar es el delito número dos con más denuncias en nuestro sistema solamente después de robo. Uh, esto fue incluso antes de la pandemia. Con la llegada de la pandemia, esta violencia uh, aumenta, crece. Uh, el confinamiento y esta medida, quédate en casa, como una medida para controlar la enfermedad, uh, nos ha encerrado en las casas, pero muchas veces, y para muchas mujeres, esto ha significado estar encerrada junto con su agresor. Entonces, uh, esto ha llevado a que aumente la violencia que se da en los hogares, uh, pero no solo esto, que también sea mucho más difícil para las mujeres salir, denunciar, justo porque tienen al lado todo el tiempo al agresor. Entonces, es muy problemático que el presidente, desde esta plataforma de las mañaneras, uh, desde la plataforma presidencial, uh, ponga en cuestión la palabra, el dicho de las mujeres, ¿no? y diga que 90% de las llamadas de las mujeres son falsas. Me gustaría hacer una aclaración, una puntualización. Uh, el mismo secretariado ejecutivo, cuando hace el reporte sobre las llamadas que llegan a 911, también desglosa y explica que hay un gran número de llamadas, un poco más de 70% de las llamadas que son llamadas improcedentes. Pero decir que son improcedentes no necesariamente quiere decir que son falsas. Uh, puede ser una llamada no procedente porque no se completó, porque se tuvo que colgar, porque faltaba información. Hay muchos escenarios. Sin embargo, uh, en la denuncia que estamos haciendo de este aumento en llamadas, ni siquiera estamos tomando en cuenta las llamadas improcedentes. El aumento que estamos reportando desde el Movimiento por los Derechos de las Mujeres, este aumento de más de 20% entre uh, febrero y marzo en llamadas a 911, únicamente toma en cuenta las llamadas procedentes. Entonces, es algo a lo que tenemos que voltear, tenemos que ver y no se puede dejar bueno, como acabamos de ver en el video, ya es lo que venimos explicando. Este, es solo eh, para que, pues, si alguien habla español, se dé una idea de lo que, pues, de lo que ya acabo de explicar y que Lorraine está traduciendo. Yeah, this was a, a video just to highlight um, what some of the, the problems that um, Tati has highlighted concerning Mexico and some of the contradictions that exist both with the laws and the structure and what women are asking for and the patriarchal structure of society and how the legal system um, supports and the church and the organizations such as school systems, 
supports this patriarchal society. Ok, si sí, vamos a la lámina, por favor, de los movimientos de mujeres en México. Perdón, estoy tratando de mover. Thank you so much, everyone, for your patience. I'm, I'm not the most uh, savvy person when it comes to these things. So I'm trying to get out of this one second. Everything okay here? I'm trying to get out of this um, slide, so I want to get over to the next one, but I'm having a little bit of difficulty. Oh, Thank okay. You. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's it, see. Okay, so it's stuck in the video. Yeah, I'm trying to get to the next slide so we can just continue our presentation. Sorry. Yeah, I'm requesting... Hey, is that oh, did that work? Si. Sí. Si, sí. yes. Oh, wonderful. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bueno, los uh, movimientos de las mujeres en México, las luchas de las mujeres en las últimas décadas podrían tomarse como uno de los modelos más claros de los movimientos sociales, no solo en México, sino en el mundo. Ok. Do you want me to repeat? Yes. Could you just say that in English? Because I was trying to yeah. fix something here. I'm sorry. The struggle of the women in the last decades. Um, it could be uh, taken with like new uh, models that the movement, social moments uh, for the demands is a uh, struggle of the space. And ya me perdí. La, reform, la, reform, la reformulación de estos conceptos que permite ya ejercer el movimiento feminista una función dirigente de un proceso revolucionario. In other words, in, um, what is happening in Mexico is a reframing and restructuring of how women should proceed and to take away those, uh, the conversation that has been framed within a patriarchal structure and put it into a structure of a feminist lens so that people can understand that the patriarchy does not have to be the only vision for a society, that the society needs to be reimagined through a different lens that is more equitable and just. Thank you. Uh, in the graphic, we are seeing the types of violence against women, um, girls, and teenagers, uh, example, physical, economic, um, sexual, obstetric, political, and I didn't see the other, Psych psychological? Psychological, yes. Psychological and emotional. Uh, if we can go the next. Um, yes. Please, thank you. Okay, this is uh, some picture we're showing about the movements in America Latina. We have from Brazil, we have um, women from last year in New York City, and Mexico City is the one in the corner, the, the right corner, and then uh, from Chile too. And then can we go to the next one, please? And this is the, the rights of uh, feminicides in America Latina. This is from 2019. And we see the numbers like in El Salvador, uh, Honduras, Honduras, and I'm trying to see everything. It's too small for me. Mm -hmm. So Brazil is one of the highest um, numbers and feminicides in America Latina. If we can go the next. Um, okay, this is the graphic. They showing us the, the violence against women between 15 years and over. Like uh, in the little towns, it's 54%. Um, this is in the little towns in the big cities, uh, 69, it's high. And then the year, the between, you know, age, 15 to 24. And then they saw they show us to the the school academic, like a basic um, and then what's the, the like a situation they for the single, if they marry. So the, the numbers are so high, everything is in red. If we can go to the next one, please. 
Okay, this one show us the distribution of the women's 15 years and over in experimental violence um, from the partner, the, the, yeah, the partner or the last relationship. This is for our condition and person who, um, who they tell them what, what happened. Uh, so the numbers is very high in 2016. And then we saw a uh, who's, um, who's this women's, they tell what's going on. Like uh, the highest numbers is they tell or they share what's going on with, the, with their situation to their families or their friends, um, the neighbors, the lawyer and the, uh, to the church and then the other person, but the highest is uh, to the family and, and the friends, that's just the two numbers. So let's go with the other, please. So now we got, we, I'm going to talk about indigenous communities in Mexico, especially in the South, where they still using um, usos y costumbres. I don't know, can you help me, Lorraine? Right, yes. Uh, usos y costumbres are, are the customs or the traditions that exist within the um, native communities within Mexico. So this, um, this issues, is still practicing, especially in the South. In Mexico, the machismo, that's normalized, normalized the, the violence of the, the violence of gender in a, in some community, indigenous communities in Mexico. The poor and la pobreza extrema y siguen practicando estos usos y costumbres. Sorry for Mexico. There is, no, puedes entrar al español. Um, there is extreme poverty, but it's also the structure of um, the patriarchy and the violence against women that has been plaguing the southern region of Mexico within the indigenous community. So, eh, estas prácticas han permitido que siguen vendiendo a las niñas. These practices continue to um, have women, I'm sorry, young, young adolescents being sold. De acuerdo a su edad, el precio varía y puede llegar, puede ser de 200 a 300 mil pesos, algo así como entre 10 mil y 15 mil dólares. So these, uh, these costs vary by the age of women, but it could be between 10,000 and 15,000 dollars and women are sold as products. Muchos venden a sus hijas para poder tener dinero y los que compran se endeudan hasta toda la vida para poder comprar a una esposa o migran a Estados Unidos para poder juntar el dinero y comprar una esposa. So many, um, many people become indebted or many men become indebted in order to buy a wife. And many migrate uh, of the indigenous communities, men migrate to the United States and actually save money. So to go back and to buy their wife. Los usos y costumbres en estas comunidades atentan contra los derechos humanos de las mujeres. These customs are a violation, a violation of human rights for women. El presidente Andrés Manuel López Obrador en algún momento se, se le cuestionó sobre ello. The president Andrés Manuel Obrador was questioned about this custom. Y la respuesta se, fue que él lamentaba lo sucedido y que desde luego era repro, reprobable, pero que no se debía est estigmatizar a las comunidades indígenas. He said he regretted the situation. However, these communities should not be stigmatized for their practices. Porque los pueblos indígenas de México hay una gran reserva de valores morales, culturales y espirituales because the indigenous communities of Mexico have a reserve of cultural tradition, of culture, and of, um, that has been passed on generation to generation, and they're a repository of morals. Esta respuesta es un claro desconocimiento de la ley y un retroceso en el, por el derecho de las niñas y las mujeres. This response is obvious that there is not a recognition of the laws and also a violation 
of what it is, the rights of young girls, adolescents, and women. From May 2020, more than 3,000 girls, they already saw in Guerrero, in La Montaña Alta, for get married. We don't have exactly the number. Many of these cases, uh, they don't have like a denounce in the police station. So, eh, podemos ver la siguiente, un pedacito del video, por favor, y ya terminamos con eso. En la zona de la montaña de Guerrero, niñas y adolescentes son vendidas por sus familiares para casarlas. No solo lo hacen por dinero, los padres o tutores llegan a intercambiarlas como mercancía por tierras o ganado. En Guerrero, la venta de niñas para casarlas, sobre todo en la montaña, no es un secreto. Y aunque cada vez más se radica esta práctica, aún hay algunos que no son denunciados. Pero en la montaña, pues yo no lo vi, pero me dice un compañero que vive de Copanatoya, que hay por la montaña, como dicen, que las muchachitas de niñas, prácticamente 13 años, 15 años, que hasta las ponen un letrero. Pues, con, Decía, pues mi esposo trabajó para allá, dice hasta el tiene un letrero. ¿Cuánto cuesta? Como si fuera una chivita. Ok, thank you. Eso sí lo hemos escuchado. Brígida es fundadora de la Casa de Atención a Mujeres Indígenas con sede en Chilapa. Afirma haber atendido varios casos de niñas de hasta 12 años. Ok, en este video, again, we already talked about before we show the video, it's just you know, have an idea what's going on, especially in uh, Mexico, in the South and in indigenous communities. I wish I can share more than this. My friend Lauren and I, we think this is a little drop in the ocean what we're talking about today. I wish next time we have a little longer time. Thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of this meeting. Thank you. Okay, so Tati, there is a, a question and answer, a question. Um, oh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to see what the question is. Uh, yo me crié en Buenos Aires, Argentina, y durante mi vida he sabido acerca de mucho fe, eh, feminicidio. En Puerto Rico, la policía matan a sus esposo, esposas, perdón, y lo defiende la corrupción. Hay demasiados jueces, oh, this is a comment, sorry. Magistrados, senadores que son sobornados. Tenemos que encontrar la ley hasta los Estados Unidos. A hacer diferencia. Todo tiene que ver con la criminalidad, uh, los criminales adinerados. Cuando encontraremos una solución al soborno. Okay. That was a comment yeah. that was made uh, about this. Um, I'm trying to see if there's another. Um, Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, go to the next uh, presentation. I'm gonna try to uh, cut it a little bit. Um, Lorraine, yeah, uh, I'm sorry trying to, interrupt. to get out of this. I'm trying to get out of this. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So we can start with the other other part of it since we're at two forty eight already. Right. Yeah. I just want to let you know we. I think our hard out is gonna have to be three twenty five p.m. Eastern time because okay. no the next plenary is here at three thirty. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm trying to get, can you help me? I will try. Yeah. Um, you. Hmm. Uh, Thank you. I just need to move this slide and start with the other slide. Okay. Um, trying to get, get the chat out of the way. In the okay. Maybe try hitting escape. And now the uh, the little arrow in the right, the left hand corner. All right, I'm trying to hit escape. I'm not. It's not. It's not responding. Okay. All right. I'm trying to um, get. Um. Hmm. Nope. Okay.
Let me see if I can move it. I'm trying to move it forward. Um, okay. Sorry. I apologize to the people on the panel. Sorry. Lorraine, no lo tienes en la esquina de tu lado izquierdo. Veo unas flechas. No sé si es para adelantar. Sí, estoy tratando de adelantar esto y, y no quiere salir de. Okay. I'm trying to get it to work out. Um, okay. Um, okay, hold okay, on. Okay, there you go. Okay, there Wonderful. you go. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for your patience. I apologize for these glitches. I'm going to start the presentation on the violence um, in Puerto Rico. So we're going to start to talk about, I'm going to use some terminology that people may be familiar with. Machismo is a question of power and privilege uh, assigned by being a cis um, man, meaning that you were uh, born and identify with that biological uh, gender. And basically it's a system of male domination and female subordination. Aguante is a term that's used in Puerto Rico and may be used throughout Latin America that says that we should tolerate certain circumstances because we shouldn't air dirty laundry, in English it's dirty laundry, out and that we should endure these uh, structures because we shouldn't make waves within society. And when I say we, I'm talking about women. Okay, femicides, again, as um, Tati had explained, is those murders that are designated because of the gender of the person, in this case, women or girls or adolescents. Femicides are characteristic because most of them are um, done by ex-partners or involve ongoing abuse, intimidation, sexual violence, etc. I am going to focus also on the question of patriarchy, which um, was discussed by Tadi, but in the context of the state, meaning colonialism. And we know that colonialism is the domination of one uh, government over another, and that in Puerto Rico, colonialism has played a large part in the situation of, of violence in society. Puerto Rico is the oldest colony in the world. It has been a colony of the United States for 123 years. There's a $73 billion debt that resulted in the implementation of the Promesa Law, which brought a seven member fiscal board, which has been basically um, initiating a set of austerity measures that have curtailed everything from the minimum wage to cutting essential services to selling of lands and to creating a great migration to the United States. Um, despite the fact that Puerto Rico has a elected government, um, the fiscal board holds the purse strings of everything, and this is causing a tremendous duress in the society of Puerto Rico. 44% of the people in Puerto Rico live below the poverty line, and the majority of that group is women. Since the inception of the fiscal control board, services to women that are experiencing uh, violent, domestic violence have been seriously curtailed, where you have social workers and psychologists that are now contracted as independent contracts and are subject to bu budget um, availability. This becomes a problem when women are coming to court in domestic violent cases, they might not have available the psychologist and the social worker, and therefore this is a problem for their case to go forward. As mentioned in the Aguante documentary, um, there have been orders of protection where women have not had access to the police because the police have been uh, lowered the amount of the police from 22,000 to 12,000. So in, even though they call 911 for getting the support, they cannot get the support because there isn't enough officers to go out and protect them. And so women have been murdered. And one particular woman in the Aguante documentary was murdered in front of her psychologist's office. Okay, the, the government of Puerto Rico had to declare a state of emergency because of the gender violence. And this was as a result of protests going back to 2018. Uh, this last year, Puerto Rico has 3 million people, uh, on average is the population. Puerto Rico has for 100,000 people, it's three, pe three pe persons that experience violence. And we had 60 femi femicides in 2020. So this very high considering the lowest number. We're number seven 
in the numbers of femicides in Latin America. According to the governor, okay, there was a request for $7 million to deal with the crisis of domestic violence in Puerto Rico. However, the Fiscal Control Board said that they would designate only $200,000. And of those $200, they also need to hire judges and police. And that's not going to be sufficient. To date, that budget has not been certified. And so women right now are experiencing the threat of violence without having these structures in the society in order to substantiate the, the services that they need. So women are right now at risk of being murdered in femicide or not having their domestic violence situations addressed. The purpose of Law 54, Law 54 in Puerto Rico came about in 1989. And Law 54 basically states that women resources have to be allocated to the prevention of violence against women. There has to be a system in the courts in order for there to be enough allocation of judges, of, of people in the court system, and, and also the police that they'd be trained in order to deal with cases of domestic violence and that the, they, there be a funding appropriate to deal with these services. There has been a series of traumatic events that have occurred in Puerto Rico. As a result, this has exacerbated the situation of violence against women. We have the hurricanes of Irma and Maria in September of 2017. The earthquake of 2019 and 2020 and the pandemic of 2020 and 2021. Why has this exacerbated the situation? First of all, there had to be a doubling up in the case of uh, Hurricane Maria and Irma. There had to be a doubling up of families. Unfortunately, the doubling up of families also led to a higher level of cases of incest that was occurring because people had to be moved from one section to another uh, people, uh, their homes were because of the lack of, of response from the United States. People's homes were destroyed, so they had to double up. They have to live in shelters. Uh, the shelters were overcrowded. There was not a, a systemic way to deal with um, sexual predators and people that had been um, had orders of protection or violence. So you have these mixed populations in these tenuous situations. Also the earthquakes, um, they, people had to live in uh, complete open tent systems. And again, there were not the structures in place uh, that should exist. Uh, the state was not ready to deal with the, with the earthquake issue. And so people, they were not a format in order to protect women and children of domestic violence. There was not a format to separate those individuals who had been known as sexual predators or uh, situations where there have been orders of protection. Those systems were not in place. And so women were again subjected in higher levels to domestic violence. The pandemic, we understand that of course there was an executive order issued by the government of Guanda Vasquez and so people had to be curfewed. The curfew because of the COVID-19 pandemic led to aggressors um, having more control over the people in the home and therefore the incidents of violence escalated, right? So in January of 2020 and February, you see that the helpline starts with 200 calls a month those calls exacerbated to 481 calls monthly, okay? They included a helpline because of, of so many calls that were coming in. And by May and June of last year, there was 835 calls that were occurring. Okay, I'm going to play a little of this aguante so that we could understand the situation and it's subtitled so. I'm just gonna go over this. Estar emociones significa debilidad. Because our values also, the way that we were raised uh, as, as macho sometimes. Uh, 
por ejemplo, a los varones, como yo te había dicho, a los varones se les dice no llores porque no es de varones. No expreses tus emociones porque expresar emociones significa debilidad. Entonces, en términos psicológicos, aunque yo no soy psicóloga, yo soy antropóloga, el, el, el fenómeno de aguante, el fenómeno de ser introvertido, va a llegar un momento, esto es física, que el sujeto va a explotar. Y entonces, en el caso de los varones y las diferencias de género, es interesante porque en el caso de Puerto Rico, a las mujeres se les es permitido expresar sus emociones, no importa dónde, cuándo y cómo, ¿no? Y en el caso de los varones, se le, se le crea un cierto tipo de resistencia, ¿no? Sí, la violencia doméstica no discrimina ni contra género ni contra clase social. El rico puede ser un agresor y puede ser una víctima. El pobre puede ser un agresor y puede ser una víctima. Porque la violencia no tiene género, no tiene colores. Claro, en Puerto Rico quienes tienen, sufren la violencia son las mujeres en desproporción. Un 90% son mujeres, 10% son hombres. So I definitely think that sexual violence is a kind of physical violence, right? And I think that violence is an exertion of power and it is an exertion of, 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 of dominance, right? And to try and to to maintain a situation of benefit to the to the detriment of another person. And I think that when gender comes along and gender dynamics, we cannot um, negate the society that we live in that is not built for women, femmes, trans folks, right, queer folks, etc. cetera. So um, I think that sexual violence as a form of physical violence is also a way to reaffirm and to maintain power dynamics um, and a hierarchy. La historia nos dice que las mujeres han sido más víctimas que los hombres. Igualmente la historia nos dice y la cultura que los hombres piensan que no pueden ser víctimas porque ellos no pueden ser agredidos por una mujer. Los hace menos hombres. Está el machismo. ¿eh? Las mujeres más rápido para denunciar porque históricamente han estado como víctimas. Los hombres se les hace más difícil. Cuando uno descubre que un hombre es la víctima dentro de una investigación, tiene que casi rogarles que sigamos con el proceso porque no quieren continuar, no quieren seguir, se avergüenza porque la cultura le ha enseñado que el macho no puede dejarse dar de una mujer ¿eh? y se les hace bien difícil, pero hemos llevado muchos casitos y últimamente yo veo que los hombres, si tú les das el suficiente apoyo, eh, feminicidio es una palabra que nosotros prácticamente adoptamos de México, sabemos que se originó allá. Es nuestra manera de poder diferenciar lo que son las muertes entre la población general a las muertes en las mujeres. De acuerdo a la Organización de las Naciones Unidas, Puerto Rico tiene una de las tasas más altas de feminicidio en América Latina. Este año, en el 2019, han muerto entre 7 a 8 mujeres a manos de su expareja eh, o la pareja actual. Pero en un año completo, en Puerto Rico mueren entre 50 a 60 mujeres. Y eso es muchísimo. Eh, de hecho, para nosotros una sola muerte ya muchísimo y quisiéramos que esto se detenga. Entendemos que estamos hasta en un estado de emergencia, aunque el estado no acaba de declararlo así. El huracán María pasó. Lorraine, can you try hitting the N key on your keyboard? Okay, escape. Uh, the N key, like the letter N. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm hitting it. I'm oh, okay. Sorry. It's okay. Thought it was worth a try. Yes, of course. Oh, and... Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can just have it skip. I'm trying to go forward. Oh, forward. I see. Okay, sorry. I thought you were trying to advance to the next slide. I want to go to the next slide. Oh, actually. you do? Okay. Got it. Yeah, I'm trying to end this so I can go to the next slide. 
yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm trying to see if I can go ahead. Let me just see if I can go ahead this, yeah. Okay, so we have the cycles of violence that exist, right? The romance period, the feeling where if anything can be said, a violent explosion occurs, right? There's a promise that there's a change, but then the cycle repeats itself again. We also have the issue of transgender women. Uh, the most uh, known transgender case has been in February of 2020. There has been six murders of transgender women in Puerto Rico. Again, under the framework of machismoism, under the framework of this patriarchy, we have a case in 2020, the uh, Serena um, Angelica Velasquez and Laila Payas, who actually came from New York to visit Puerto Rico. And while they were there, they were murdered. They were two of the cases that were able to be classified and actually the, the people that murdered them were caught. On the case of Alexa, who was a very uh, popularized case of transgender woman who went to the bathroom in Toa Alta in McDonald's was videotaped. Um, and then through social media, uh, there were the, the people that went and murdered her. We do not know exactly who they were that went and murdered her. To this day, that case has not been resolved, but we know that there has been a rise in transgender violence, um, transgender women in Puerto Rico. And in the last uh, past year, it's been six of them uh, and 60 uh, femicides. Okay, so you can see here the number of total femicides. And this is from the study that was done by Observatorio en Contra Feminicidio Equidad. Uh, this observatory did a study and it basically breaks down the total number of femicides and we can see it started at 37 and went up to 60. We also see the trans uh, femicides that are categorized went from two to six. I have to again underline that these statistics may be higher. However, there are still the need to classify by the government that things are femicide or trans femicide, sometimes those classifications are not done because the police have not properly been trained and because the systems are not in place in order to provide the characterizations of these, um, these murders. We also know that there has been a campaign, PazParaLaMujer.org is an organization that have 38 organizations that are part of it as well. And they have done a campaign to bring the prevention aspect. This campaign is um, dedicated to adolescents to teach them what is a consensual relationship without violence. Ama consentido, to love with meaning. This is being offered to middle school children from 12 and then into the high schools to 18 to teach them what are healthy relationships. And it's under the hashtag Ama Consentido. And this has been a very strong campaign that is done by Paz Para La Mujer um, to bring or to prevent this system of violence to continue. There has also been no estas sola, hashtag, tu pareja controla con quien tu estas, right? Your, your couple controls who you are. These are a short segment of videos that is also pasparalamujer.org. And it's again a campaign in social media so that women recognize and people that are experiencing gender violence in the LGBTQ plus community, what are the signs that you are experiencing violence? Sometimes people may not be aware, again, the culture of machismo, the culture of things being as certain norms because this is what is experienced at home, so this is normal. So these um, videos are the opportunity to provide the prevention that is necessary in, in our communities and to educate people to prevent the cycle of violence. There's also the introduction of a curriculum 
uh, gender-based curriculum, a curriculo de perspectiva de género. This has been uh, a discussion that has been happening by the government of Puerto Rico as a result of the emergency, but this has been brought about by all of the community groups and the women who have been demanding for there to be a change. This has been proposed to start in August of 2021. We are not sure if this is actually going to be implemented in the schools, but we understand that a perspectiva de género, a, a gender perspective, understanding um, all the question of gender, understanding and respecting people from the LGBTQ and stopping the cycle of violence is essential for us to improve the quality of life for women and the LGBTQ plus communities. What are ways that you can support these initiatives? Um, you can donate to these organizations. Uh, Coordinadora para la Paz is an umbrella entity whose membership is 38 core organizations and 14 individuals. These organizations provide shelter direct service. Feminist and human rights activists offer direct services and supports to survivor of domestic violence. And it's Paz para la Mujer.org. Kilometro Cero, this is an organization that promotes citizen participation in anti-violence and accountability of police and legal systems. Okay, these are important entities that are doing really uh, important work at the community and the grassroots level, because we understand that, that prevention is an absolutely important component in order to stem the tide of the violence that exists in our communities. Again, Taller Salud is a feminist grassroots organization dedicated to improve the access for women of health care and the commitment to reduce the incidence of violence. It works closely with communities to offer economic opportunities. We know that this is also women are not only um, in the home, they have to be the caregivers also to their in-laws, to the aging community that exists in Puerto Rico, and also to their parents. So they not only have the responsibility of the nuclear family or that family, immediate family, but also the extended family, they are responsible for how, so this way Taller La Salud is trying to work with women so that they could create those economical opportunities for themselves so that they could lift themselves from the cycle of poverty that they exist. Proyecto Matria is a community-based organization that provides services throughout Puerto Rico through a holistic lens of domestic violence survivor. They receive psychological, educational, housing, and economic support. Okay. So I don't know if anyone has um, any questions or would like to make any comments about what I have presented. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. I don't see any, I'm trying to see in the Q&A or if somebody wants to um, pose a question for me. Regarding this uh, particular issues of Puerto Rico and also what we just saw de la compañera Tadi um, it looks again. like Nathan would like to, uh, has a hand up. Okay. Hi. Hi, thank you very much. This was, uh, I'm really hard and, and um, in, informational uh, session. Thank you. Oh, thank and you I so have... much. Thank you so much, Nathan, for, um, I, I just want to note that we recognize that we would have had liked to have a more interactive, but we understand that there was a lot of components that had to um, be explained within a context. Um, and we also recognize that there are areas that we were not able to cover because of time constraints, but we appreciate your comments. Sure, I, I had a question. Um, may, maybe it's, it's a little narrow, but you know, I was wondering if to your knowledge, there are corresponding issues between you mentioned a reduction in the police force in Puerto Rico. Yes. There are corresponding issues between that and the no, the function that 
police notoriously serve on the mainland? Um, yes, I mean, um, we know that in Puerto Rico, um, they include, there has been also incidents where the police, um, members of the police force have also been um, the aggressors of domestic violence. We know that there has been uh, police repression um, when it comes to protesting um, as people, as I had mentioned with the fiscal control board, um, there have been many incidents of the police and repression. And so, yes, there is this level that there, there's not, there's a lot of uh, fear of the police um, because of historically what has the police represented, uh, especially in communities where have gone out to protest uh, on certain uh, things that are being implemented by the government, but also in the context of women, we know that there are police officers who have also been part of the problem of domestic violence. Um, so yeah, that's, it's a very big issue. There is the issue of the reduction of the police, but there also is the issue that the police can be part of the problem, right? And so um, it, is, it, is, it is definitely um, a very difficult situation um, because the police exist to support what is being implemented by the state. And so that's why I think the, the question of looking at uh, the prevention, you know, and the reframing as, as Tadi had mentioned, um, the reframing of, of how the issue of violence in our society exists and how we have to look at those connections of violence between violence and the state and, and look to change those dynamics and recognize that the police have been part of the problem. But definitely, I, I understand your perspective. Thank you, thank you. I don't know if there's any other comments or- Eugene, comment? Comment from Eugene in the chat? Okay, let's, oh yeah. Ask who pays 10 to 15,000 for buying a wife? Does it go to the family of the woman or are these kidnapped women? Okay, so Tadi, quieres saber si los 10 a 15 mil, uh, miles, uh, si se le va a la familia del esposo, eh, perdón, a la familia de, de la mujer cuando se casan o estas son mujeres que son secuestradas? No, eso es entre. Es, es entre 10 mil y 15 mil dólares es lo que pagan para poder comprar una esposa, para poder comprar una niña, porque son prácticamente niñas. Eh, okay. Y ese dinero lo reciben los papás de la, de la muchacha y si la muchacha en algún momento se llega a ir de la casa donde vive con el, con el hombre, uh -huh. ellos, ella tiene que devolver todo ese dinero que han pagado. Okay, so Eugene, um, the monies that are received are received from the, what Tadi wants to underline is the child. So many of the of girls are sold, like 12, they are before puberty, and the money is given to the parents of the girl. And if the girl runs away from the husband, the parents of the girl are liable for that amount of money. I don't know if this answers your question. Uh, you had a question also about kidnapped women. Uh, quería saber también sobre las mujeres que son secuestradas. Bueno, las, las mujeres que son secuestradas generalmente para ellas muy pocas piden rescate. Recientemente la semana pasada, los que andamos mucho en la red social, eh, hubo una película mexicana, es, es una película, se llama La Civil y eh, estuvo en el Festival de Cannes y esa película habla sobre una madre mexicana que para encontrar a los secuestradores de su hija se disfrazó de muchas cosas y pudo llevar a la cárcel a la mitad de ellos. Sin embargo, fue asesinada afuera de su casa porque nunca recibió eh, ninguna uh, protección por parte de la autoridad. Este, y ella había pagado un rescate anteriormente a, 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 pues a una banda de, de criminales y su hija eh, fue encontrada en una fosa. 
Okay, so Tadi says in the majority of cases, kidnapped woman, um, there's not a ransom. However, there was a particular uh, case that's called in the film uh, La Civil, in which a Mexican mother um, had to go underground and try to find her daughter. Uh, she paid a ransom for her daughter and she was able to bring uh, justice. However, she ended up being assassinated oh. by that particular band of people who had participated in not only um, kidnapping her daughter, but murdering her daughter, although they were able to get a ransom for her daughter. Wow. Um, is the situation the same in Chiapas where the Zapatistas have influence in terms of women being sold? Uh, Quiere saber él si es, esa situación también existe en Chiapas de las mujeres que se han, um, están a venta. No, en Chiapas, eh, pues recordemos que todas las zonas autónomas generalmente no hay este tipo de delincuencia porque ellos no han permitido que entren eh, pues estos grupos armados, aunque en las últimas semanas hemos escuchado de un municipio particularmente eh, donde han desplazado mucha gente indígena, pero no. No, eh, hasta ahorita los casos que se han conocido solamente es Guerrero, Oaxaca y una parte de Veracruz. So this has not existed in the communities, the Zapatistas communities of Chiapas, but has existed in Oaxaca, Veracruz and Guerrero. These are the regions that are experiencing the sale of, you would say, extremely young adolescents at these prices, uh, but this is not the case uh, where the Zapatistas have control of a third of Chiapas. That, so, that so is, folks, that sorry, I just have to, Eugene, Eugene, if yes. I may. Um, so it's 321. Uh, technically, this okay. workshop is at time. I have to click the end button at 325. So I leave that to Lorraine and Tati to decide how to use that remaining time. Over. Okay. So uh, Eugene, Eugene wants to just one sentence. Sure. Sure, Eugene, I'm sorry, go the, ahead. The political nature of the Zapatistas being part of the left is very encouraging that, that the, the uh, sale of young girls and women does not take place. And it was great news to hear that. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene, for sharing that. I'd like to thank everyone um, for coming today to this uh, workshop. I'd like to uh, emphasize again that you can support uh, the women in, in Mexico and in Puerto Rico by going and looking for the hashtags when you're there, donating your time, and also uh, to participate uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the struggle for independence for Puerto Rico because we know that colonialism is a crime. In the case of Mexico, to support what is happening in the grassroots level of feminist groups and donate, um, you know, donate money, uh, get involved in what they're doing and continue to read, because these struggles are also our struggles. And we know that also there is an epidemic in the United States of domestic violence. No sé si quiere decir algo, Tadi, antes de terminar. Tenemos um, minutos. No, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm sorry that. I very in Russian, and a little nervous because that's supposed to be in English and then turns to Spanish. But I hope that this is not going to be the last time to invite us, like because this is a little, a little bit. That's what's going on in Mexico. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. Very, thank you so much to the Green Party. I'd like to thank the Latinx Caucus that I am part of of the Green Party for supporting um, this idea of coming and presenting this workshop. Muchas gracias a todos que participaron en este taller y pues para adelante nosotros queremos y seguimos en nuestra lucha y nuestra devoción a, a, nuestra, a nuestra lucha en Latinoamérica. We, we remain devoted to our struggle in Latin America and for equality for women in Latin America. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all.